Hi, my name is Aaron Rutman. I'm a neuroradiologist. Let's talk about a specific primary brain tumor called an oligodendroglioma. An oligodendroglioma is a tumor usually involving the cortex and subcortical white matter, mostly in the frontal and temporal lobes. These are infiltrative tumors. They can cause cortical expansion and gyral enlargement and infiltrate the white matter with poorly defined borders. They can cross the corpus callosum. They're usually heterogeneous, but generally T2 hyperintense and T1 hypointense. Tumor heterogeneity can include intratumoral hemorrhage, uh, mucoid degeneration, as seen in these small cystic T2 hyperintense foci. And they often demonstrate calcifications, which you can see here is this focus of T2 hypointensity. And as previously mentioned, they can cross the corpus callosum. On CT, the tumor is poorly delineated as indistinct hypodensity uh, with mass effect and sulcal effacement, but an important advantage of CT is the obvious calcifications, which are common in these tumors. Oligos demonstrate variable contrast enhancement, seen in about 50%, um, and although fairly common, it turns out that enhancement is not a reliable indicator of tumor grade, and that is that enhancement does not necessarily predict a higher grade for tumor. Uh, note that when seen, the enhancement's usually pretty heterogeneous and can be somewhat faint or stippled, as in this case. And finally, oligos typically demonstrate no diffusion restriction, and the ADC values in astrocytoma are, are usually lower. Oligos are glial tumors, obviously of oligodendrocyte um, origin. Remember that oligodendrocytes are the myelinating cells of the CNS, and these tumors can account for about 5 to 18 percent of all gliomas. They're usually seen in middle-aged adults in their 30s and 40s. They can be seen in younger adults, but rarely in children. The anaplastic or grade 3 form is usually seen a bit later in life. And most commonly, these uh, tumors will present with seizure, likely due to the cortical involvement, and of course, other um, symptoms related to increased intracranial pressure, such as headache. Historically, these tumors were diagnosed based on histology, including a granular cytoplasm and so-called fried egg appearance. But since the 2016 WHO classification update, they're now defined genetically as the genotype more closely predicts tumor behavior and clinical outcomes. The diagnosis is predicated on IDH mutation status, an IDH wild-type tumor is glioblastoma, and it also must have a chromosome 1P19Q co-deletion to be an oligo. Okay, without the co-deletion, it's an astrocytoma. A low-grade or who-grade 2 oligodendroglioma is slowly growing with low mitotic activity on pathology, whereas a grade 3 tumor, also referred to as an anaplastic oligodendroglioma, demonstrates increased, increased cell density, mitotic figures, microvascular proliferation, and necrosis. And as previously mentioned, the degree of enhancement seen in these tumors imperfectly correlates with an increased grade. Differential is going to include astrocytomas as well as various other cortically based tumors such as the ganglioglioma, pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma, and DNET. And uh, an acute encephalitis can also appear as mass like cortical swelling with underlying white matter abnormality and should be considered in some clinical settings. So, the take home points this is a cortically based tumor which usually occurs in middle aged adults. On imaging, it has poorly defined borders, usually found in the frontal and temporal lobes. It often has calcifications, cystic degeneration, hemorrhage, variable enhancement, and the diagnosis is genetic and must be IDH mutant and 1P19Q co-deleted. And here are a few important references on oligodendrogliomas. Thank you.